me write some of these things down because we already know a lot about the monarch butterfly. So we know that there are chemicals sprayed on the milkweed. We know that they're mowing the milkweed down. And we also know that people are weeding in their yards. So people pull it up. And so when the monarch butterfly comes, she doesn't have anywhere to lay her eggs. Haley? Milkweed has to chunk milk and weed. You are exactly right. There are two chunks in it, milk and weed. Raise your hand if you know what kind of a word that is. Tavisha, do you know what kind of a word that is? It's a compound word. You're exactly right. Compound word. So when the monarch adult is making its way to Mexico, if these things that we know are happening, then the monarch doesn't have anywhere to lay her eggs. And if that happens, the numbers of monarchs that are getting to Mexico to sleep for the winter, there's not going to be any monarchs left. And we can solve that problem. Even though we are just first graders, there are things that we can do to help the environment and help the monarchs find a spot to lay their eggs. The research that the students were engaged in was, it started with an article as to why um, the monarch population was deteriorating. And so they researched as to why that's happening, looked more in depth uh, into that, and then ways that they could respond and encourage other people to respond. Um, to that and the importance as a team that we work together to um, to bring back that population. And so they researched um, the population decline, they researched the causes and the effects of that, and then again, what types of plants, um, what type of garden that they could provide here, or what type of habitat they could provide for the monarchs here. Um, that led into another need to know, so they had to research the type of plants that would attract them. Um, they had to research how to get funding um, for the plants and the gardens and how to implement them, um, what would grow in the gardens, and then how to maintain that garden. This is just, this is measurement in inches, and that tells centimeters, so you can just write. So, just so like the end of the sentence. Yeah, just write. Their wingspan is four inches. Is that what you're writing? An outdoor area could just be um, an outdoor area, but we refer to ours as an outdoor classroom, really a classroom without walls. The teachers begin with the content, they begin with the standards, and then they build in that outdoor learning into that. So when they're going to plan something, they may be creating a grid and computing the area or the perimeter before, before they plant and decide how many plants would be able to fit in a particular area. Um, so they may be writing and documenting um, what's going on and documenting their observations as they go on. So I think it's that pre-planning, that collaborative planning ahead of time that aligns to the standards that really allows it to be a true learning environment. All right, boys and girls, in the room, we worked out our square foot garden plan. Why do we have to put the plants in a, a square foot or the 12 inches? Taylor? Because some plants can't fit in like one square. Very good. Some plants are going to grow bigger. Claire, did you want to add to that? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, Or it oh, won't grow the right way. It doesn't grow the right way. You're exactly right. They need their space. Some of the plants will grow big and some of them grow smaller. So they have to, we have to look and see how many plants can go in a square foot. So when we plant our broccoli and our spinach, my broccoli, how many plants can go in one square foot? One. T Tyler? One. Okay, just one. So we're going to, in just a minute, we're going to make our square foot boxes with the string.
How many spinach, it's okay. How many spinach can go in one square foot? Megan, do you remember or did you? How many? Nine. Nine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is the first thing is we're gonna need some helpers to help measure out the, the square foot. So I want, go ahead and just put your papers down, that's fine. Daniel, you and Tyler are gonna be our helping with measurement. Okay, so we're gonna come over, come over on this side. Can you move down just a little bit? All right, so you're gonna come with your ruler and measure across. Can you measure and show us where the square foot is? Okay, all right, so Daniel, you wanna tie that on in that area? I try to do a variety of things, not just science and language arts out there. We also try to incorporate math out there. Um, so we were um, using measurement of square foot garden. We started that inside the classroom um, where we researched how many seeds go in a square foot, why it has to be that size. We compared it to ourselves having our own house and our own yard um, and talking about plants that are bigger, plants that are smaller and taller, skinnier. Um, so they researched that first, decided how they were going to put the plants inside the square foot. So if a plant had, you could put four, like the lettuce, you could put four plants. How are you going to place them? Are you going to place them all four in a clump? Are you, you know, we talked about that before we went out and they drew it on their, they plotted it in their garden on paper. Lonnie, do you have a ruler? Lonnie. No. Oh, Daniel's got the ruler, okay. Um, is there any more to do? It's okay. I'm gonna take this out. Oh look, yes, because now it's time. We have our square boxes. All right, let me move these. Eclair, we're gonna put one broccoli in each box that's in the middle. And the spinach are the littler ones. You got it? How do you? Okay, that's good. Are you? Do three in a. This one died. And Daniel has an idea to do a triangle. So now that we have our plants planted in the right spot, what are we gonna do for the plant? Raise your hand if you know one thing we have to do for the plant to help it. Trey? Water it. Okay, we have to keep it watered. Taylor? Make sure it has sunlight. Make sure it has sunlight. We got that. What else, Megan? Make sure it has air. Has, it, we got air, don't we? Okay. Tyler? Make sure it has roots. It's got its roots and it's got its place to spread out and grow. Once they had the garden in place and they raised the monarch butterflies, um, they realized that they went out, they had many aphids on the garden. So again, that was another need to know. Um, so they had to employ their critical thinking skills again and do yet more research throughout the process and realize um, they had to find a solution to that problem. And so they looked at natural um, some natural ways that they could control that problem without harming the larvae that were already out there for the monarchs. Boys and girls, look, what is this? What happened? Look, look at this. Taylor, what is this? Milkweed. This is our milkweed, but it doesn't look very healthy. What's wrong with it, Lonnie? Um, the aphids, it killed it. How do you know there's aphids? Claire? Because there's little yellow stuff, and I saw some of them are moving. Some of them are moving. These little yellow bugs are all over the milkweed, and look what, what's happened. Now, when the caterpillars eat it, it doesn't look like this. So what do we know about the aphids? Are they something we want on the milkweed or not, Emma? Uh, no, because they're going to kill it. They're going to kill it. So I wonder if Miss Buchanan, our science teacher, knows something or has told you something that we could do to get rid of these aphids? So we can have milkweed at our garden? Do you know what to do to get rid of the aphids? Claire, do you have an idea? Uh, you could put lots of ladybugs on there and they will eat the aphids. Is that what ladybugs like to eat? Yes. Lonnie, they like to eat the aphids? Yes. We need to get some ladybugs. Did you have another idea, Tyler? You should like put like more than one million um, ladybugs on there. I think we need to get a lot of ladybugs. We should like catch a lot. We could catch them in, the, in their environment, couldn't we, in their habitat and bring them down here. I think what we're gonna have to do is take this out and start over in the spring. 
how is this going to impact the monarch butterflies that are coming to trying to get to Mexico, Lonnie? It, um, they can't lay their eggs. That's right. They're not going to have a place to lay their eggs here. What else might happen, Claire? Uh, the caterpillars won't have anything to eat. That's right. The caterpillars, she's not going to lay her eggs here. They're not safe, are they? Integrating um, STEM um, is critical for students, and especially from the elementary level on up. Nothing occurs um, in a silo, and so to teach things in a disjointed way, it's very difficult for students to see those connections. And so by integrating and blurring the lines between those content areas, um, students can begin to see the connections across the content areas, which is how how we work, we don't work in silos.